my friends, welcome back to Nightmare Edition. We are ready to get our first laboratory research. We're going to have nine Zerg research. I Come on, there we go. I think we have a total of nine, yes, because you start out with three, and then we've done two missions that each get three apiece. There have been some changes. Fortified Bunker is exactly the same as it was before because it's very, very strong already. Does not need to be buffed in any sort of way. Strike Turret, on the other hand, is criminally underpowered. However, we didn't want to increase the numbers straight up. We wanted to keep the damage output the same for the most part. So what we did was we outfitted the turret and we changed it a little bit. First of all, it gains a benefit from vehicle weapon upgrades, which is very cool. And the other change is it does double damage at half the attack speed now, which means that the DPS of the Shrike turret remains the same. However, it no longer becomes useless when your opponent gets more armor upgrades. However, also, it scales with the vehicle weapon upgrades. It doesn't scale as well with them because it's not attacking as often. So it's a little bit, it is definitely an upgrade from what it was before, especially in the later stages. It is designed for this to be the big bio boy energy. And this is more of a, oh, I wanna go mech. However, I need to not die in the early game. I wanna have a use for my biological units maybe have a use for my mercenaries, that sort of thing. Just give more options based on the style that you want to play. So we're going for Shrike Turret because it is normally terrible. It really sells itself like it's a good upgrade and it's just not. And now that we have the Reaper, we... Why did I go over here? Hmm. Do I want this? I'm not sure. I'm going to try not getting it. I want to get new upgrades for the most part, and... Oh, excuse me. That doesn't really involve the Reaper. I think that I want to go to Meinhof, get the Hellion. That's going to give two more Zerg research, and allow us to get the Planetary Fortress, or the Perdition Turret, neither of which has actually been changed, but I want to keep going to get that gosh darn Predator. I don't even remember what's different about the Predator. I just really want it. <laughs> so we're going to Outbreak. Now, when I played this on stream, Outbreak took me an hour in game time. We'll see how it goes here. <laughs> First of all, the night comes a lot sooner. I need to be very prepared and not get overwhelmed. I have a feeling that I probably will die on the first attempt at the first night. We don't have music. All right, boys. All right we have music. We get this. You going sweet on that doctor, lady Jimmy. And then. Can't see why else we'd keep fighting for these damn dirt so first thing I want to say about the changes here is that double gas geysers are gone. Reason being is that this mission with Mass Reaper is completely and totally imbalanced. Like it's just too good. Oh gosh, they're already here. Yeah, so during the daytime, there are uh, broodlings now. Just a couple. I mean, it's not like a game-ending unit or anything, but it is something to keep you a little bit honest during that daytime. And we're going to have to do our best to actually get more stuff up. Economy is so light at the beginning of this mission. We're going to get this right here. Hopefully that's going to work out. And then we're going to grab another thing right here, and that should be enough defenses, please. Mm, right here, or right here? Or right there. I'll just build it right here. I'm not entirely sure. I'm a little bit afraid that the infested marines are going to get me. They're going to focus all their fire on individual bunkers, and it's going to be too much for me. The first night shouldn't be too difficult because, you know, it's the first night. But we will see. Let's get some guys onto gas. I definitely want to get... I think that I want my composition to be Reaper Hellion. The Hellion actually might be pretty good in that combination. Is it critical? Okay, get that guy in here. Move this Marine over. Pop that Fire Bat on in. And we're going to do the same thing over here. And now we just have to hope that this is enough for now. Oops. Got plus one attack. And we're going to have to start getting depots soon. And I am reaching the threshold of my economy. Once we are done with this 
segment, we will see the next change, which I'm not looking forward to. <laughs> It'll be an adventure for all of us. Oh my goodness, they killed that already. Oh, we gotta get more guys over here. Oh, those infested marines do so much damage. Vendor it. Nope. Nope. Pull back. Oh gosh, I'm gonna die. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> Two minutes to survive without a wall, huh? Let's grab these medics, bring them over here to see if they can help out. Reaper DPS is gonna be huge here. Get the Reaper targeting down the infested marines. Uh, get some depots down. Do I have mercs yet? Not quite. Mercenaries will be really nice. That is going to be a big boost of indi indi not individual power, of initial power. Ah, oh, crap. Yep, this was a little bit too slow. Pull back, pull back. SCVs. Uh, more bigs! Save me! We're going to lose the merc compound after this, but at least we got the war pigs out. Oh, God. Build what we can, medic what we can. 45 more seconds. Keep building SCVs. Hmm. <laughs> this is one of those interesting things about difficulty that uh, I think is interesting to talk about because different people have different opinions. There are some people out there who see this and go, Oh, you should never be able to win if this happens on high difficulty. But I personally believe the exact opposite, where this kind of should be required on high difficulty, and you should be able to figure out how to survive through it. Okay, I'm not quite ready to move out, because I do know that there's going to be a couple broodlings to come on in during the daytime. Gotta deal with this first wave, and then we can start clearing. And then we're going to have to figure out how to get our fortified defenses back up and running. Oh gosh, yeah, there's broodlings heading on over there being a nuisance. And let's start clearing the north. Whew, that was a lot of stuff. I'm going to start saving up some gas. Now, the next change is the structures. Oh, the structures are light. I thought the structures weren't light. Oh, well, the structures have massively increased HP. I believe it's four times as much. It might just be three times as much. They do not get killed real fast by anything, though. Which I think really improves the mission, because the buildings were just too weak for the most part. They got melted. Let's put this here, and... Oh, no, right here. Now, I'm really far behind still, if you haven't noticed... I lost a barracks there. I lost a lot of stuff. I'm afraid they're going to come from the back. And I just won't be able to do anything about it. We'll see. Hmm. I'd actually be interested in your guys' opinion on the whole difficulty thing I was talking about. Do you think it's okay to be busted like that? Do you think it should be required on high difficulties? Or do you think it should just be like, well, if they ever get into your base ever, then you deserve to instantly lose? Because, I mean, I, I I put my opinion on my sleeve there. I am completely guilty of that. But I do think it is a debate worth having. Because there are valid points on both sides. However, my points are more valid. Er. <laughs> Alright, we gotta get in here. I realize that I'm not gonna be able to shuttle my entire army through this. Let's get bunker here, bunker here, and bunker there. And just hope that these bunkers are not at all required. <laughs> so we're gonna go Firebat, Firebat, and then Reaper, Reaper. Sir, if you kill one of those I guess we'll put Reapers in here. I think that I'm somewhat stable at least. Uh, let's get a factory over here. We can start getting an armory for attack upgrades. And please don't hit me from behind. Let's get that hotkeyed, this hotkeyed. Mm, do we need another factory after that? I'm not sure. Marines, Marines, Marines. 
And then that's really it. We can spread some of the medics out to try to heal the SCBs. And then just get Reapers into bunkers. Reapers and bunks, really good on this mission because every attacker is light. Including the aberrations, I believe. Unless they've been changed. But I... Oh look, he's patching up the colonist hut. That's really nice. Good job, bud. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's get a tech lab on here. Make sure that we're saturated. Hellion production is going to begin. I'm really excited to show off the new Hellion upgrades. We just have to uh, get there. Uh, these need to... There. No more medics in the combat control group for now. And then... I am really afraid of this area, I'll be completely honest. We'll see. So I've reached full saturation, which is good. The enemy... Not really coming in too fast. Remember that I have the increased number of people inside the bunker and increased range. Which is really why the Reaper is so great. Five range, increased to six. Yeah, he's not supposed to have that. And it's only at the cost of being two slots per Reaper. Let's uh, burrow these and... Alright, now the enemy are starting to come in fiercer numbers and we're going to start pulling SCVs. That's why I keep building, despite being saturated. I just want to make sure that I have everything going on. Now, uh, I really am feeling this gas deficit. Normally, the Hellion is such a bad unit on this mission. Oh, hello. Get some troops down there now. More like get some SCVs down there, bud. No. Oh. Please over here. Get the forward to help what reinforce. Dang. Was it human? And we're going to rebuild. In 30 seconds. Get some Reapers to help the defense. Whoa, buddy! <laughs> Got that AOE damage over here. Get some support SCVs to repair. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. Uh, pull these back. And then here comes the next wave of broodlings. You have to be back by dark. Get prepared to deal with it and just hope that we have enough right now. I'm gonna, yes, SCVs over here, SCVs over here. These aren't that scary, but if you do move out too aggressively, they will be able to surround and execute. Now we're going to move all these out. Oops, why did I sell that? I need it. Well, there's an infester. So the next change is that there's actually defenders around this map. There's not a huge number of them. It's not like they're going to have mass ultralisk at the bottom base or something. However... There are defenders, and infestors do have the ability to fungal growth and stuff, so you gotta be careful that you don't get got. Are you mining? Uh, yeah, let's get you... Maybe I should just leave a little gap right here. Maybe do it like this, so that the guys can come in and out. Without being super vulnerable. Another good change is, basically, this gas geyser has been relocated over here. Which means that if you want it, you gotta take this base, which is a tough d base to hold. It's not simple, it's not easy. So I would like to try to kill the Virofi- er, sorry, uh, the Infester. Crap, I spoiled it. I did not mean to do that, I apologize. I was just thinking about it. Yeah, the Infestors are not the objective anymore. As you can tell by the fact that I'm not actually getting the research for it. I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to get on top of it for this night. But the reason that it was switched to a virophage is that it's too easy to just have detection, build it during the daytime, and snipe it. Yeah, we, do, we don't want that to happen. This is nightmare difficulty. You have to be out and about in the night if you want to get those bonus objectives. So next night is going to be when we try to do this. Hey, guys. <laughs> Stop blocking traffic. So we got Reapers, we got Hellions. Let's see if we can get some upgrades. Getting some Carapace would be good. And getting some Vehicle Armor would be good. Because of these little bits of damage that really wear you down. 
Now, I think that the force that comes from the top is going to be diminished because this area is gone, this area is gone. I think this one goes over here. I don't actually know. This area might go down here too. I will never care enough to memorize these things. Keep the Hellion train going. I believe that the enemy buildings also have increased armor, so that Hellions are actually superior to Marines in this circumstance. Because you don't want your mineral dump to be Marines in every mission, right? You want to design missions so it kind of alternates between, oh, the Marines are good here, the Hellions good here, the Vultures good here, that sort of thing. Is that all the mineral dumps? I think it is. So this is going to be my mobile, mobile defense team. And they're going to, wherever I see really super scary stuff happen, they're going to come help out with that. Oh, look at how good these Reapers are. I am in love. I think we're fine, though. This night doesn't feel that bad. One thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get some more sensor towers. This is the mission that you unlock the sensor tower. They don't really make fanfare of it. However, they're really good at figuring out where all the infested are going to come from, and I would like to make sure that I can see where they're balling up so they don't get the opportunity to bust. So we're going to burrow these. I just want to make sure that if something happens, I can easily move through my base. I think it's more important than blocking the infested inside of my base. All right, this is a little group of guys. Let's see what we can do. Seems good. And then on this side, we will do the same for 100 gas. Okay, that's a big push. Let's just be here to be ready. This side, on the other hand, not taking much. And I haven't seen any aberrations since the first set, which is pretty interesting to me. I don't know if they... I don't know when the aberrations spawn, because I usually beat this mission before aberrations appear, even on Brutal. It's just part of how the pathing works. Or not the pathing, but the... It's just an easy mission. Ooh. Okay. And make sure that we are right up here. Riding that support fire. Didn't manage to touch it. Ooh, here's another group. Get on top of it. The infested marines do a lot of damage. Taking out a couple of those SCVs. And then once again, we are going to... You know what? I feel pretty comfortable moving out now. Even though the broodlings are going to attack. Let's just see if we can get our guys outside. And I want to start clearing the areas that the bonus objectives are so I can show off the new Hellion upgrade. The Hellion is one of those interesting units. Uh, Dustin Browder, the lead designer of StarCraft II, actually said that the Hellion, Firebat, and Vulture were his biggest design regrets in Wings of Liberty because they all filled that same gap. But unfortunately, the Vulture is just better than the rest of them. They, not the same gap, but they filled the same niche. And then the Vulture was just the best of them because spider mines, because it's cheap, all that kind of stuff. And I think it's interesting to try to give them each a different use. And we're going to try to do that in this mod. So the Vulture is going to be more about, well, the spider mines, right? So the Vulture is going to be effectively unchanged, where it's a fine mineral dump that you're really buying the spider mines first. Oh my gosh, look at how many guys there are. And then the Fire Bat, obviously, is for that infantry composition, so that it can be the buffer against small Zerg forces, but is weaker against the heavy Zerg forces. And then that leaves the Fire Bat. And I'm not going to tell you what it does yet. You're going to have to explore with me and experience it. We're going to move on over here and see if we can open up Virophage Numero Doso. Which is not Spanish for number two. Uh, I'm not sure that I can clean this out as fast as I would like. We'll see. The Reapers do pretty solid damage here. So when I played this on stream, the buildings just were not light. <laughs> and it was so slow to clear everything. It was absolutely, as I said, it took over an hour in-game time on my successful attempt. Because my kill speed was so bad. So I'm glad that, that has been changed a little bit. 
Here's the first fire page. Ah, here are the aberrations. So now we have blue flame. That's normal. Plus 10 damage versus light. And we're going to have to wait till the next day, I believe. We have a couple guys who are just slower than everything else. This is going to run out of resources soon, so I'm actually going to switch into a Hellion Heavy composition here. Because I don't want to abandon my base. There is a argument for going up here. But I'm not excited about it. Reason being is heading up here means that all my depots will die. The enemy will just walk right in and nail them, and I can't deal with that. Hmm. I feel like this mission specifically does not feel as hard as it should, partially because I knew what was coming, simply because I played this on stream before, and it's not that the surprise is part of it, but I just happened to be prepared as a result. I still came very close to dying at the beginning, though. I gotta keep that in mind. Okay, we gotta be careful. This is a mission where it's very easy to accidentally overextend. And I just haven't done that. I've been very cautious. And this mission specifically rewards that caution. We're gonna get one more factory. And that should be enough to just pump units for the rest of the game. It's definitely gonna be a couple more nights before I clean everything up. And remember that the way this mission works in single player is the number of units that spawn per building is increased based on the number of buildings that you've killed. So as you clear faster, there's more zombies that come out per building. But it's limited to a certain amount, so eventually near the end it starts reducing again. However, we're kind of in that midpoint where this night and the next night are probably going to be the biggest pressure nights. Maybe. Either that or we've already gone... Above that, I don't know. However, I do know that I'm out of gas. I'm actually going to try making another command center and floating it. We'll see how that goes. Because I do think gas is very valuable. And while I'm pretty sure that this Hellion count is going to be enough, I'm not 110% convinced. Oh, I want to move out onto the map. I want to start clearing. But I know that I will die if I try. No, we got to be careful. We got to be patient. We got to accept the fact that we went all in on the bunker, right? We have every bunker upgrade possible before going here. And that's why we are successful. Do not ruin it by going outside of our bunker range. Add on complete. I'm really saying this more for myself than I'm saying it for anybody else. It's just... A... You got to be smart. And by you, I mean me. Me got to be smart. I'm going to open this up a little bit, then I'll rebuild it. Alright, so we burn down here. Take these out. And then head on down. So I'm starting to feel like the pressure in these later nights is actually a little, little too weak, though. Maybe... I need to experience it as someone who doesn't invest all in on early defense, though. We'll see. Looks like that sector's clear, Jim. Better move on to the next Also, I think the number of broodlings was decreased. Because I remember fighting a lot more broodlings when I was getting slaughtered before. Man, these AI spellcasters are so much better. They just use their abilities really aggressively. If you play this in normal Wings of Liberty, that infester will drop a guy. He'll be like, here's your infested Terran for the week, sir. And it's just garbage. I much prefer it when they're frantically doing everything they can to stop you. It feels really cool. So we are not going to head out yet. We're going to uh, head out to this base yet. We'll probably do it on the next day. I think that I am getting to that threshold of the maximum spawnage. I think it's when there's 55... Is that 55 structures killed or 55 structures remaining? I don't remember. I feel like Mindhawk told me that the number was 55, but I don't remember the context behind this number at all. So this area is a little bit of a base. I don't know how strong it is. We're going to head over here, though. 
and be prepared. Get that next upgrade that I'm looking for. So the other Hellion upgrade normally is a double width on the flame, and it's really bad. It's just like garbage. It's useless. So what we did was we decided, hey, what theming in this game was underutilized? And we decided that, hey, what if the Diamondback had something to work with? So that you could try to get a mech fire on the move base composition. So we're playing with the idea of the Hellion being able to fire on the move, just like, oh, hello. <laughs> so it can pop out defenders like that. That's what I wanted to do. I really like it. It's a lot of fun. I am not sure that the unit is actually worth building compared to the Vulture still. I think that the Vulture still might be better, but this gives you ooh, hello, a reason to build it in tandem with the Diamondback. And the Diamondback, I think we can all agree, is one of those units that's like on the cusp, but just needs a couple little pieces of help to make it a viable thing. And we all love it. It's really cool. All right, so they're diving down. I might be able to actually finish off this mission tomorrow simply because we're going to be able to clear a lot faster with the fire on the move by just kind of doing run bys. Oh, hello. You got to get in. It is interesting that our version of the Hellion is actually weaker in front combat. However, let's be honest. How many of you actually use the Hellion in part of your... Oh my gosh, I have no money. Oh, we are going to have to abandon that base. Hmm. That's not good. Oh, I hope I don't get cracked here. So there's very little pressure coming from this side. It's just a conga line that seems to be getting cleared up. How many kills do you guys have? 111. Oh, 110. 114. Wow. Insane. There's a lot of enemies on this mission. So they're coming down. Oh my gosh, they have plus three melee. Ooh, and plus two carapace. We're stuck on one one still. So this is definitely one of those ones that they could kind of go a little bit crazy if you left it for too long. Look at how much damage they do. Okay, we need to provide support fire here. This area is still doing great. We are running out of repairs. How do we deal with that? I'm considering salvaging a bunker so that my other bunkers can keep getting repaired. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay, no money. We're going to bring this over there, but put it over the cliff so it's not the end of the world. We're going to grab all of these and be prepared to head up north. See how things go. Oh, that's a lot of infested Terran. Only plus two ranged attack, so we were able to deal with that. And then, three, two, one, let's go. Okay, this is where we got to be super duper fast. Oh, well, let's see if we can kill thousands of them now. Unfortunately, broodlings don't count on your final kill count. This was changed in Wings of Liberty after In Utter Darkness was cheesable. At least I don't believe that they count. I might be wrong about that. Yeah, this definitely is clear and significantly easier because we can get into position. Oh, no! Uh, okay, we gotta get these out. Start kiting them over here. Get up onto the high ground. We have no money to repair over there. Um, The whole position SCVs are actually doing okay. Alright, cleaned up. There's one broodling left. Let's see if we can finish this. You get a few of these guys to target down this building and that building and then head down here. And the rest of them are going to try to take down that final base area. We're going to mine just in case things go awry and see if we can make this happen. I say this was easy and then it took me 40 minutes. <laughs> uh. Let me take this out. Spread our guys. We only have one minute left, but that's going to be enough to take down ten more structures. You're almost done. There's just a handful of infested... <laughs> Get them, Firebat. Left. I'll highlight their locations on your map. 
There we go, and there we go. You did it, Jim. <sighs> we did it, Jim. Thanks, Doctor. Now I've gotta get my yeah, you gotta get out of here, Doc. <laughs> 3,218 kills. Easy peasy. Well, that was Nightmare Edition Outbreak. I think that the attack waves on nights like 4 and above could probably use a little bit of tweaking to be increased in difficulty just a tad. I noticed a very big lack of aberrations. Just a couple slappy boys I think would really be helpful there. Besides that, I had a really good time. This is a fun mission. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. I will see you tomorrow. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Peace.